deforestation to the threat uh, endangered and uh, uh, conditions goes like this uh, they will uh, uh, extinct so uh, next uh, we'll go to the magnitude of the biodiversity how the biodiversity is magnitude uh, see here uh, uh, there are the mega diversity centers of the world uh, we can see here the brazil colombia ecuador peru mexico zaire madagascar australia china indonesia india and malaysia these are the very very important sites uh, where you can see the uh, uh, diversity of uh, uh, animals or diversity of the plant species you can see in these uh, spots these are only the centers now uh, supporting the many of the animal and insects and uh, plant species if there is any disturbance in these areas again uh, uh, these uh, uh, biodiversity centers uh, lose their diversity and lose their services but uh, uh, present situation is not uh, in favor of the nature or not in the favor of uh, diversity uh, human destruction is going on and uh, uh, there is a, a huge amount of uh, species we are losing every year from these sites reasons for richness of, richness of biodiversity why uh, this much uh, uh, richness you can see in particular localities what's the reason behind it uh, diversity of environment and environmental factors always uh, shows uh, a tremendous impact on the uh, species so particularly climatic conditions also uh, sometimes they favors or sometimes uh, uh, they harm the species so in these areas uh, the environmental factors are always good and supportive so that uh, uh, the richness is also more a wide range of climatic conditions so that helps the plant species to adapt or uh, uh, to get a more uh, uh, changes and uh, 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 the richness we are seeing in that particular localities conditions for uh, evolution are optimum evolution are optimum here and uh, extinction are lower that's why uh, every year uh, uh, new species new varieties are coming out from these areas and they are surviving uh, as uh, new species and uh, extinctions are low that's why the richness is high in these areas uh, distribution of biodiversity how the biodiversity is distributed here so now biodiversity comprises of various life forms uh, tiny to uh, small to or micro to macro and uh, species uh, constitute the currency of the biodiversity you can say uh, currency a uh, richness uh, uh, some areas i've shown you they are very rich in uh, biodiversity so species always can be called as a, a currency uh, uh, 100 species are there and uh, that itself uh, are rich in that particular uh, locality thousand species are there more rich uh, like this uh, we can say a particular locality uh, low number to high number wherever the locality with high number of species uh, that is always uh, uh, rich uh, in biodiversity so uh, species can be called as a, a currency for the biodiversity to assess the biodiversity one should study the species diversity and geographical patterns of the species so species always plays an important number of species is always uh, very very important variation is always important so nature always goes for the variation uh, doesn't want the uh, uniformity nature's law it's a nature's law variation is the law of nature it never allows the uniformity but uh, uh, nowadays we are seeing uh, uh, we are destructing destructing the forest uh, deforestation is going on and uh, we are going for a uh, uh, mono plant cultivation like eucalyptus or uh, uh, some other plants we are cultivating only one type of plantation we are going so that's not at all good for the nature uh, that has a very bad impact on the nature and uh, hot spots uh, the word uh, generally we use in the biodiversity it's a very very important uh, word hot spot uh, to qualify 
uh, as the biodiversity hotspot uh, May's uh, 2000 edition, he given some guidelines and uh, uh, one species uh, uh, set to be uh, one area set to be hotspot. It has to qualify uh, two important things. One is uh, it must contain at least five to zero point five to uh, or uh, fifteen hundred species of vascular plants as uh, endemics. Then only that can be that area can be declared as a, a hotspot, and it has to have lost at least 70% of its primary vegetation. These two things are putting that area uh, can be declared that area as a hot spot. So endangered uh, endemic plant species, 1500 endemic plant species are present in that locality. You know the endemism, endemism plays an important role here. Endemism is nothing but confined to a particular locality. There are different plants in Telangana also like a uh, Herocarpus antlinum, uh, that's endemic to the Nalamala forest, or if you go to the Tirupati, uh, Saikas Bedomai, or uh, Pimpinella Tirupatensis, they are uh, endemic to the uh, Tirupati hills. Like this, uh, uh, different plants, uh, uh, different regions, uh, different uh, localities, they are endemic. Any area consists of the uh, 1500 species uh, 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 endemic to particular locality, and uh, the area is disturbed more than 70%. That can be declared as a hot spot and uh, uh, governments or some NGO organizations can take up that area uh, for conservation. And around the world, uh, there are uh, 25 areas qualified uh, with these two uh, point uh, criteria <coughs> and uh, declared them as uh, hot spots. Uh, these are all various uh, hot spots uh, declared worldwide. Uh, there are 25. Uh, we do have uh, two hot spots in India. One is uh, Western Ghats and the other one is uh, here Eastern Himalayas. Okay, these two uh, places uh, uh, declared as uh, hot spots in India. And you know, uh, these two places uh, with a great uh, number of species living there and uh, uh, richness is high. And uh, this Indo Burma region said to be, or uh, uh, this uh, uh, northeastern part is said to be. A cradle for angiosperms. Uh, angiosperms evolved uh, in this place and uh, dispersed to the various parts of the world. And nature gives the time uh, for the each and every species. If you go to the Jurassic period, Jurassic period is era golden era for the dinosaurs as well as the uh, gymnosperms. Huge gigantic gymnosperms. Uh, 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 flourished during the Jurassic period, uh, uh, nearly 200 to 300 feet height Jurassic uh, uh, Zimmersperm plants uh, were flourished uh, and during the course of time, uh, what happens, uh, uh, nature uh, withdrawn or cornered these uh, Zimmersperms to the uh, particular localities and it has given opportunity to or uh, expand uh, and occupy the more and more, yeah, more, more and more area by the angiosperms. So uh, during the course of evolution, nature supports some organisms for some period. After that, uh, uh, either it will withdraw that species or uh, uh, it minimizes the, uh, uh, what do you say, that uh, size of that species to the uh, particular locality and uh, it gives uh, opportunity to the new species to the expand. And uh, our human beings evolved very recently, uh, Cenozoic uh, period, very recently evolved. And nature has given opportunity to the uh, Homo sapiens. Now we occupied uh, all the Earth's surface and we are moving to the other planets also. And uh, 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 of course, we don't know how long uh, nature support us uh, to expand. Uh, if the things goes like this, the imbalances goes like this, nature definitely will take a revenge. And uh, what we are seeing today is uh, pandemics and all these. Uh, see, nature always try to put the things in a balanced state. There is an imbalance. Uh, uh, it applies the different things and uh, put the things into the equilibrium state. So uh, in India, uh, we have two uh, spots. Uh, one is a uh, Eastern Ghats and other one is the uh, Western Ghats and other one is the uh, Eastern Himalayas. Uh, they are supporting uh, uh, worried uh, 
species and uh, uh, this is the biogeographic uh, uh, map of uh, india uh, because of uh, varied climatic conditions if you go to the uh, uh, north side uh, uh, cool climatic conditions coming to the south side uh, uh, some more hot climatic conditions and you can see the desert or you can see the uh, himalayas and valleys great valleys and also plain lands and the deccan plateau these are all mountains mountain regions and all uh, gives the varied type of uh, environmental climatic conditions uh, this favors the uh, this gives the uh, unique uh, uh, nest to uniqueness to the india in the world and it has the its own uh, diversity and the diversity in the culture diversity in the vegetation diversity in the uh, different languages and the different uh, ideas also we have so uh, magnitude of the biodiversity uh, when we talk so uh, uh, there are uh, some terms uh, we should apply uh, one is uh, endemic species next one is the keystone species umbrella species and the flagship flagship species uh, any doubts people are getting i don't know i mean because this is a platform online platform i cannot see you yeah but i'm moving ahead can i continue yes yeah, sir yeah you can okay, okay. Yeah. so uh, endemic species keystone species umbrella species and flagship species so let us see yeah, endemism already we discussed endemism is nothing but it is confined to the particular locality uh, except in that locality uh, the species is not find uh, any other where uh so that uh, species is called a uh, endemic species so endemism occurs when populations of one species are separated uh, so they cannot uh, interbreed and uh, uh, so there are some barriers there are some barriers those barriers restrict that species to stay in that locality so they cannot uh, uh, expand and confined to the restricted to the, that environment so they are called as a uh, endemic plant species these are all barriers uh, uh, put them uh, in the endemism or endemic uh, called as endemic species the endemics are not randomly distributed across the earth but uh, they are clustered and are called uh, centers of endemism the centers of endemism so uh, many plants and animal species uh, are uh, endemic and uh, uh, you can see a uh, uh, great number of patches uh, Uh, distributed uh, uh, all over the world and the distribution of endemic taxa is used to identify the area of uh, protection preservation and conservation this is very very important uh, when we talk about the endemism uh, endemic plant species or endemic species any species endemic species the area should be protected otherwise uh, uh, if any disturbance in that area you know recently uh, the kalvi kodi which is uh, endemic to the kadapa district uh, of andhra pradesh uh, there was a project proposal uh, by the some industries uh, later on they come to know that uh, there is a uh, existence of this uh, bird called the kalvi kodi that is endemic to the particular uh, particular locality and they stopped that uh, project immediately uh, crores and crores of rupees they invested but uh, finally they stop that project to save that one species because if you if there is any disturbance in that locality uh, it will go for extinction a small species one species of course but uh, once it uh, uh, go for extinction we cannot uh, bring it back so for the concern of such species endemic species uh, these areas are uh, 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 should be declared as a uh, highly uh, protection and preservation of conserved areas then only we can conserve these uh, endemic uh, plant and animal species otherwise uh, they are very sensitive very uh, sensitive species any disturbance comes there uh, either clim uh, climatic or edific or environmental or uh, human interfered conditions uh, put them for uh, endangered and extinction and most of the endangered sites are uh, 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 what is it become sensitive because of the anthropogenic activities 
anthropogenic activity, only human interference. Otherwise, uh, uh, nature, uh, uh, most of the time, nature never uh, uh, struggles with those species, but uh, human interference only, many species are at a threat. Uh, and biodiversity and endemism, uh, the endemic species play a very important role in these following aspects. Biography of the uh, biography of the country of or uh, island. So centers of speciation. They said to be centers of speciation because they evolved in that area, and because of uh, no time or because of barriers, either physical or uh, genetic barriers, uh, they cannot expand and uh, they restricted to the particular locality and have become the endemic. And uh, those centers are said to be uh, speciation centers. And the areas of uh, extinction also, because uh, they are confined to that particular locality. Disturbances put them for a threat, uh, vulnerable, and uh, removal of that species. So uh, those areas are highly sensitive and uh, uh, also called as extinction centers. And extent of variation, we can see the variation also, because each and every species is unique, and particularly the uh, endemic species is highly unique and uh, uh, the services are also uh, highly unique because that restricted to the uh, uh, very small area in the world, very small area in the world. And uh, adaptive evolution of uh, species. So these are all uh, important uh, uh, things uh, uh, we should remember uh, when we talk about the endemism. And other important uh, species we talked about uh, keystone species. So keystone species uh, play a very important role, a uh, very dramatic uh, role, and uh, they always uh, uh, put the things in a equilibrium state, equilibrium state. So there is an imbalance uh, because of these keystone species, uh, nature is getting uh, balanced. Otherwise, uh, whole things will go imbalanced. That's why these species are called as a keystone species, keystone species. So sometimes the abundance of one particular uh, predator has a dramatic effect on the abundances of uh, many other species. So here you see the sea actor, the sea actor, and uh, these are called uh, sea urchins, and uh, this is a, a kelp forest. You know, kelp forest is the uh, shelter zone for uh, many organisms, many organisms. And uh, uh, these sea urchins, uh, uh, they feed on these uh, kelp forest and they destroy this uh, kelp forest. And uh, these sea otters uh, feed on these uh, sea urchins. Sea otters always controls the population of the population of the sea urchins. Otherwise, what happens? And nowadays, the number of these uh, sea otters is uh, uh, decreasing. If it is continuously decrease, what happens? Uh, they cannot control the sea urchins because the number is low, sea otters number is low, and sea urchins number will become high more, and uh, they eat out more and more of uh, kelp, and uh, they destroy more kelp forest, and uh, all the organisms uh, which are taking shelter in this kelp forest uh, uh, will become shelterless and uh, will get affected, and uh, they all will become uh, uh, either endangered or extinct. So one species is protecting uh, all other organisms. Yeah, many other or many organisms at least. So they are called as a keystone species. So here uh, one example is a uh, sea otters. And next one is umbrella species. Umbrella species occurs uh, within or migrate across the large areas. And uh, why they are called umbrella species? Uh, because uh, the umbrella of their home ranges includes the habitats of other wildlife species. Just it gives the shelter to the many number of species. Uh, one species gives the shelter to the many number of species. Just you see, Ficus bengalensis. Uh, if you go to the um, Calcutta, there, uh, that uh, Aura Botanical Garden, you know, uh, hundreds of acres it expanded. And uh, coming to the Mahabhuna Telangana, Telangana state uh, in Mahabhuna district, uh, Lelmarri, it also expanded to the uh, hundreds of acres land. 
one one plant so it is uh, supporting n number of species and it's a shelter zone for uh, uh, birds bats uh, insects uh, uh any many microorganisms also so such type of species are called as a uh, umbrella species they are also very important uh, for the nature if you cut uh, one plant spe species here because like bengalans is occupied uh, more and more area and all other uh, species uh, lose their shelter you know uh, somewhere some places if you can see uh, one ficus like bengalans is a uh, uh, holds the uh, uh 50 to 100 uh, uh, honeycombs honeycombs can be uh, structured uh, to these uh, um, um, ficus bengalensis 50 to 100 also you can see sometimes that means uh, uh, they are called uh, uh, bee uh, bee trees they are called bee trees bee trees bee trees and uh, bees uh, prefer such type of uh, trees uh, to build their cones they are very supportive so such species are called as a uh, umbrella species and the flagship species uh, this is another term we are using uh, this is nothing but uh, uh, any species chosen to its uh, 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 some environmental cause such as an ecosystem or in need of conservation and uh, uh, because of their uh, uh, charisma we choose these species as a flagship species and uh, uh, their vulnerability also uh their endangeredness also sometimes we consider and uh, uh the destructiveness in order to best uh, endanger support and uh, acknowledgement from the public at a large here are some species uh, are, you are seeing all these uh, some are at endangered some are at vulnerable and some are uh, uh, royal bengal tiger uh, it's a cherishma uh, king cobra uh, cherishma and uh, panda it's a vulnerability they have chosen uh, for a as a flagship species and they always remain uh, high uh, bengal tiger is uh, 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 a proud uh, species for india a proud species for india and uh, ongolo bull is a very proud uh, species for uh, andhra okay so uh, because of that uh, charisma uh, their uniqueness it gives the uh, it puts the that species as a flag and uh, uh, people look at uh, and if you go to the uh, uh, i think madhya madhya pradesh uh, some uh, black uh, hen black uh, uh, i forgot the name mm, black hen I don't know. Locally, it's called Nalla Kool. Don't I get it? Anybody knows that name? In Madhya Pradesh, particularly Madhya Pradesh locality, uh, there. Uh... Okay. Anybody? Anybody knows the name of that uh, hen? Black hen. the meat of the black hen is uh, uh, 1000 rupees per kg that's available in all markets chicken markets yeah i think the kadaknath sir yeah, kadaknath kadaknath yeah, yeah. Uh, kadaknath yeah. is also uh, uh, that can be put, uh, uh, named as a flagship species for that area so so uh, union yeah. for uh, nature uh, 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 natural and environmental protection uh, peer committee uh, uh, every year compiles uh, registers uh, one is a red data book other one is a green data book and a blue data book so red data book talks about the threatened species green data book talks about the rare plants and blue data book uh, uh, gives the detailed information on uh, endangered species so here uh, uh, some books red data books threatened birds of asia and threatened birds of is other one uh, so uh, we are entering into the part 3 that's a loss of biodiversity how we are losing the diversity uh, see here that uh, um, sparrow 